Hi, this is Richie Donson of Acoustic Box Stringed Instrument Repair. You can find me on the web at AcousticBox.com. I'm here today to replace a banjo nut. The owner of the banjo or the previous owner of the banjo has uh, decided that the action was too stiff for them, so they filed the nut slots too deep, uh, at least too deep on the second string because we're getting a buzz open. And I know the neck is in good condition because I've already set this banjo up otherwise. You can't just go out and purchase a nut for a banjo. You can purchase plastic prefabricated nuts and saddles for a guitar. However, you have to know exactly what size you want. You have to almost have the old one with you. And inevitably, it will have to be set up for your individual instrument. So my advice is don't mess with it. Even if you have an inexpensive guitar and the nut is broken or needs replacing for whatever reason, I would seek a professional luthier. You will have an instrument that plays nice and feels nice and everything is set up correctly for the instrument itself. And here we go to replace the bone nut on this banjo. I'm going to remove the tension of the strings. Only a couple of turns on each, including, in this case, the fifth string. Now that they're slack and evenly slacked, I will remove them. These are new strings, so I want to just retain these. And something to consider when you're replacing a bone nut is you'll have these strings on and off of this banjo or up to tension and slack on this banjo um, two or three times, sometimes more depending on, uh, on how experienced you are. A minimum of twice. The nut that's in here has to be removed. I'll need my little hammer. I'll need an exacto knife. And I'm going to use a piece of bone blank to help me get this nut out of this banjo. With the strings slacked evenly and removed, I'm going to go ahead and start now. First thing I'm going to do is score a line right here where the bone nut and the finish of the peg head meet. Right in that corner, slowly and carefully. The object here is to score that finish line because you're going you're to pop this nut loose. Next place I want to score is the base and treble side. Right along here. Where the finish is built up very carefully and slowly. You don't want to cut into the wood. You just want that line. And also, this line right here, and this line. I'm going to do the same thing on the base side. For this piece of bone, and I'm going to put this right up against the edge of the nut on the treble side. Make sure I don't hit anything but the bone when I do that, and give it a light but firm tap. Move it over to the base side, light but firm tap. I can't describe to you exactly how to do this. I can show you, but experience has to be what guides you. I'll do the same thing on the treble side from the back side of the nut, and the, treble, and the base side. Again, treble side, a little more aggressive. Bass side. Bring it around to the front. To the leading edge of the nut. Treble side. Bass side. This time a little more aggressive. Bass side. Treble side. Now, I'm going to test this. I'm going to use a pair of flush cutting end nips. And then, carefully, We'll grab the nut and see if it'll move. Elbow down on this side, easy. Now 
There you go, that volunteered right out of there. No damage, everything looks great, and we will go ahead and use this nut as a template to build the new one. The nut blank material comes in different sizes, different thicknesses. I, I purchased most of mine through Stuart McDonald, available at stumac.com, and I like to get these big old pieces. I don't remember what number they are, but uh, uh, what I can do is get about three um, banjo nuts out of one of these guys, so it's pretty economical for the shop. And these things are already seasoned out. They're dried, the fat has been removed from them, and uh, they've been processed and uh, are really nice pieces of bone for the most part. And uh, I've already got a piece here that I'm going to use the last bit of. There's plenty of meat here to, uh, to build a new nut. I begin the fabrication process by measuring. The nut that was removed fit very well. So I'm going to take the measurement from that. And that's 185 thousandths. The nut material that I intend to use to fabricate the new nut is 225 thousandths. So we need to remove evenly 40 thousandths. And I'm going to start with the thickness because I want to fit this nut in here before I trim any off the sides or do any of that. And I'll show you a couple of tricks that will help that. I want to make sure I have a good clean flat spot on this. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the belt sander and just kiss this enough to clean this up. Alright, now that I have it marked, I'm going to set these dial calip this dial a set of dial calipers to 185 thousandths. And then I'm going to lock them in. I'm going to let this top edge ride on the clean side, and this little edge here will act sort of as a scribe. Watch. You're talking stainless steel versus bone, so you're not going to hurt the calipers. And the other side, you've got to flip it over, you can't just rotate it. Now I'm going to take a pencil, and this is this is sharp. In fact, this is half pencil. I'll show you what we'll use that for, but it's nice and flat uh, and sharp on the end. Good for this though, and then that'll ride right down in that groove that we just made. So that you can see we got a good clean line. I have cut the tail off uh, that I had here sticking out of bone scrap. And uh, I'm going to go ahead down to this line on both sides with the sander. Now in the spirit of sneaking up on this thing, I've stopped right at the, right at the pencil line. Now I'm going to go ahead and test fit this. It may be a little too snug, which is fine. I'd rather take a little bit off at a time rather than too much and have to start over with another piece of bone. Right, here I am test fitting this. I'm using my left hand here to try to get in. That is a little bit too snug. I don't want to force that down, but man, she's really close. I did a good job marking that thing. I'm back at the grinder. I'm going to take just a, a, I'm going to take just a very small amount off here. That's going to be it. This is going to fit now. All right, here we are back at the banjo, and uh, here's our bone. You hear that? That squeaked in there without having to force it. It doesn't wiggle in any direction. This thing is perfect. 
Now, I'll show you how to continue the fabrication. Now it's time to mark the height of this nut. Remember that flat pencil? Well, I went ahead and um, took a couple strokes on this to sharpen it up. The goal is to keep the bottom side flat on these pencils and then sharpen it this way so that everything goes down to a point that is uh, being pointed directly from the flat side. So, and the reason for that is I can get across three frets with this pencil and mark the fret line on this bone nut. There's the plane of the frets. Now we're not going to take this nut all the way down to that mark. We're going to reinsert it in the banjo. And, and holding the nut still, I want to bring it up on the high side of this uh, neck rest. I'm going to mark the treble side, the base side up next to the binding and the headstock, and I'm going to mark the underside. So that when I remove this, I have the marks where they'll need to be. I want to mark this nut so that I can rough it in and then come back for a final adjustment. When I rough this nut in, what I want to do is take that same pencil and uh, make a line about a sixteenth of an inch above the plane of the frets. This is plenty of room for a banjo nut. And that this is the treble side and this is the bass side. But I want to turn this thing over on this flat bottom that you must ensure that you have and mark the treble side T and the base side B and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess material here and then grind down that excess on the side since we don't have much of it. Alright here we are at the bandsaw. A couple things I want to mention right now. I'm, I've got a little piece of popper scrap that will slide right in that blade. This is this is the little bandsaw. This is the one I use to cut bone on. This blade is good for nothing but bone now that I've been cutting bone on it. I do so many nut replacements uh, each week that uh, I need this little bandsaw almost just for that. So that gives me a flat surface. Otherwise, I got too much play in here when I feed this thing through. And you got to be careful too. Your hands are in close proximity to a moving blade that will cut bone. It'll damn sure take your finger out. So be careful. All right, that's in place. I'm going to cut close to that line. I'm not going to take that line. I'm just going to cut up to it or, or, or within reach. are back at the bench sander. First thing I'm going to do is take it down to that, that line a sixteenth above, the sixteenth of an inch above the fret uh, line. And then I'm going to take the sides down just to those pencil marks. 